Hi everyone, this is tutorial 5 for Instrument Lab 3. Watch this video and read the instructions before you start the lab. In this video, we are going to talk about the quizzes and the goals for Instrument Lab 3 and how you can get your images. At the beginning of this lab session, you are going to take a pre-lab quiz based on the tutorial and the instructions. It contains five questions and it is not hard. But if you failed to pass these pre-lab quizzes, you get a second chance to take the post-lab quizzes at the beginning of the next lab session. This quiz is based on the tutorial instructions and what you've learned in the, during the lab session. It contains 10 questions and it is harder than the pre-lab quizzes. If you failed again, you cannot continue this course anymore. You got several goals to achieve at this lab session. To explain the hysteresis between forward and reverse images, to demonstrate the influence of the set point force on images, and to, temp and to demonstrate the influence of the PID gains on the images. The probe you use this time is the same as Instrument Lab 2, it's HQCSC17. This is the sample for Instrument Lab 3. It is an exfoliated pressed CD. The aluminum on the surface is not completely exfoliated. If you start image, you will see discrete, discrete bits in your image, like this. Align the fast scan direction to across the long axis of the bits. To achieve this, you should use the, the rotation function, which you learned in Instrument Lab 2. In Instrument Lab 2, you also learned how to adjust the slope. Use the slope adjustment function to flatten your image this time as well. After you aligned the scan direction and adjusted the slope, you can start the image. Use the zoom function to select an image with a 1 micron scan range around the bit. After you have got the image of the bit, select ZX scan forward for the left side of the image and cross section, and the axis scan backward for the right side of the image and cross section. You should see hysteresis between forward and reverse cross section images. Try to explain it. When you are doing the following parts, make sure to note your setting parameters for your lab report. Then we can start to deal with the set point value and the PID gains. Return the image size to 10 to 20 microns and start the image with the set point in its initial value. At this time, it should be 100 nanonewton. When a quarter of the image was done, reduce the set point value with a factor by a factor of 2. That means you should change it to 50 nanonewton. Do not forget to hit, hit the enter key when you, uh, when you input the value here. After half of the image was done, reduce the set point value by a fact by a fact of two again. It should be 25 nanonewton nano now. And do the similar do the same thing in in the last quarter of the image. This process is called bracketing. Notice the streaks at lower set point value and severe images. Return the set point value to its initial value and bracketing the PID gains. When bracketing the one of the PID gains, the other two should remain in, it, in their initial value. The bracketing process is similar. Different thing is, when bracketing the gains, you don't have to change it by, by a factor of two, and you might start to change it for just a few lines at a time until you know how it works. For bracketing the P gains, at least one of your four areas should show poor quality due to bad choice of P gain value. And for the I gains, you should show at least one bad area with I gain too low and one bad area with I gain too high. To summarize this video, we talk about the goals in Instrument Lab 3 and what bracketing is. I suggest you to review the content in AFM Lesson 6 in our YouTube channel. This will help you 
to understand feedbacks and gain. During the lab, please follow the lab procedures you've learned at the beginning of this course. If you are the last one to leave the lab, turn off the light and lock the door. Thanks for watching.